My least favorite thing is debugging code in chunks that are too big. It's painful because you don't have a good feedback loop. When you make a small change, you're left guessing at whether it worked. The fix? Use debugging tools to zoom in and break it into smaller pieces. Nick's debugging strategies, a video by PageKey. Before we start, why even bother with this? Well, PageKey is all about taking back tech. That means we want to own our own infrastructure, we want to write and customize our own software, and we want to help others do the same. As an example, imagine that Apple has decided that red texts are the way to go. No more green, no more blue, just red. You disagree, and you think it's ugly. What's the solution? Do you just never update the latest version for your phone? Better, just refuse to use Apple. Own the whole tech stack so that you don't get vendor locked and vendor bullied. By the way, Android, you're not safe either. Google is watching. By the way, these slides are made with pure React, no framework. Here's the build script, it's less than 50 lines. Here are the dependencies, also a pretty short list. My next video is going to be about React from scratch, and I'll share some more details about how I did this. In the meantime, the source is on GitHub at pagekey slash education in the 182 folder. So what are we talking about today? First, we're gonna look at Nix REPL, then we'll talk about using default.nix for debugging. Finally, we'll learn clearing cache with surgical precision. So first, Nix REPL or read evaluate print loop. So if you're not sure what something does in Nix, you can always try plugging it in one line at a time into Nix REPL. To get to it, type Nix REPL into your command line. You'll get a little prompt like this, and then you can start pasting things in. If you wanted to see what that import Nix packages does that you see basically at the top of every file, paste it in. There's no output as you can see, but then we can use things from Nix packages. So we can define our default Nix here as a fetch URL. We're gonna fetch this file from the internet. And again, there's no output. But if you type in default.nix, you'll see that it's a variable that's been assigned to a Nix store location. So it went, downloaded, and put it in your Nix store. You can even call call package, which is from Nix packages, on that default.nix file, and it returns a lambda, or a function that you can call. And if you call that function by passing this little arg list that's empty, then you get a derivation. Now, how do we see the output of the derivation? More on that soon. By the way, if you take this Nix store path up top, and outside of the Nix REPL session, you cat that file or you look inside of that file, you'll see that this is the exact file from that URL. So if this was google.com that you fetch URL from, you would see the source code for google.com, but in this case, it is a previous file from a previous video. Now, how do we call that derivation? Like I mentioned, we can't really do that in REPL, so we'll have to see in the next piece. So using default.nix for testing, this is a fun technique I discovered. If you edit default.nix in any folder, make it a blank folder, you can paste in this whole thing that we basically just put in line by line in the previous section, and then you can run nix-build. That's basically going to run this script, assuming that it produces a derivation. So remember in nix REPL, we ended up with this derivation output that we didn't know what to do with. If you plug that into default.nix, run nix-build, then you can see, in our case it actually fails, but if it works, um, you'll see that it produces a Nix store output of whatever derivation you're creating. Clearing cache with surgical precision. Sometimes a remote file changes. In the last section, we fetched a URL and Nix has it cached. So even though the remote server changed the contents of that file, you're not gonna see it locally. How do we force Nix to grab the latest version of that file? Well, back to our example where we fetch URL, you can see in Nix REPL, we put that into a Nix store location and you can cat that file and assume that this HTTPS has changed, then all you have to do is nix dash store dash dash delete and paste the path to the default nix output. You'll see this and it will be cleared out such that the next time you run fetch URL, it will output something different. That's it for this video, a little short and sweet this week. We learned how to use nix REPL read evaluate print loop. We can evaluate derivations with default.nix and we figured out how to clear our nix cache very precisely if there's a specific thing that we would like to re-download. If you liked this, subscribe to Take Back Tech. We have weekly videos to learn new tech topics. We talk about self-hosting and we love rebuilding things from scratch. See you there.